for another day. We thank him for his mercy and for his grace. We praise the Lord for uh, how he's blessed us and brought us. And I hope that this video will stay posted up and we're able to help someone. We're going to talk about relationships and we're going to talk about marriage. Um, I have quite a few people that we know Lord, that are... Um, for his mercy. Hold on, let me turn this and down. And for his grace. We praise that, the Lord uh, for, uh, how he's blessed us. There you go. That's um, uh, living together. I notice a lot of people live together now. Amen. Uh, and that's not God's way. God's way is a holy matrimony. Um, weddings, uh, not weddings, but relationships and marriages were ordained by God. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. But before we get into that, though, we do want to thank God for all he's doing. We want to thank God for his mercy and for his grace. And we want to thank God for just allowing you to be with us. Those that have Cash App, you can uh, bless the church. You can bless the ministry by simply going to our Cash App um, and uh, being a blessing to us. We don't normally uh, um, make a big issue about offerings on Wednesday night. We kind of just get into the teaching, but I want to stop and pause tonight and uh, ask you to be a blessing to the uh, church here. Uh, <clears throat> we want to be able to bless our community. We want to be able to grow. We, uh, we want to be able to uh, purchase facilities. We, a lot of things we need to do, but we can't do it without uh, the saints. So we want you to be a blessing to us. Uh, I'm assuming that that cash app is going to be on the uh, um, screen here, but just in case um, you don't know it, it is dollar sign, capital R, E, B, I, R, T, H, capital F, L, I, N, T. And be, let's be a blessing to, let's be a blessing to our ministry here uh, uh, by way of um, uh, the cash app, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, whatever God lays on your heart, let's be a blessing. Now, if you know someone tonight that uh, uh, want to get married or remarried or someone that wants to uh, know how to stay married or someone that uh, wants to know how to maintain a relationship, then you need to go ahead and call them up and tell them uh, to come on in. And if you got some questions, go ahead. Let me see if I can get this up. Yes, uh, got some questions. Go ahead. If not, I want to ask my own questions. All right. But I want you to be able to um, be blessed of God by my experience. I have been married to Vakita for 37 years. Oh. This coming December, it will be 38 years. Hallelujah. And I thank God. I praise the Lord for longevity, for being married that long. My grandparents were married. Uh, over 60 years, I want to say. Mother Dunlap and Bishop Dunlap was married uh, for a very long time. I want to say over 50 at least, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's what it's all about, staying with one another, raising a family, watching your family grow, watching your children grow, your grandchildren, mm -hmm. and uh, just being with one another. Uh, and one good thing about it, uh, um, uh, if you put Jesus in it and put Jesus first, he will bless you. I want to pray for this session, and I also, I want, uh, I don't have a copy of my, uh, um, uh, let me see if I can get it. I don't have a copy of the prayer uh, list. It's on the, um, on the website there. But uh, I want to pray that God would touch. We have so many things going on uh, in our world, and so we're going to pray. Uh, we are praying for um, uh, uh, little Lim, uh, uh, how you pronounce that name? I'm not sure. There it is. There go the prayer list. Can they still hear me? Well, this is okay. Uh, we're praying for Lim. Uh, that's uh, John and Latoya's son. It's also uh, my, my my one of my best friends, Sandy Dunlap. That's his grandson. We're praying for little Lim. We're praying for Reginald, uh, a friend of mine that uh, had chemo uh, for Aunt Myrtle. She's having surgery. For Jamie, for healing, Jamie failed, and she hurt herself. I'm going to pray for her. I want to say, Catherine, did she have the surgery or getting ready to have the surgery? I think it's Friday. 
We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray for Dion and Taronda. We're praying for uh, Aunt Donita, Vivian, uh, for surgery or now for healing, and Tanya for healing, and, and Amanda for healing also. I haven't heard from any of these guys. That's why they're still on the uh, prayer list. And we're praying that this guy would just have his way. Uh, we didn't get a chance to update it, but it will be updated tonight. But we're also praying for man. Uh, I can't think of his name. And uh, his sister, uh, what, what's their last name? Uh, they lost their mother. Uh, we're praying for them as well. Uh, that God would bless them in this hour, uh, that he would touch them in the loss of their mother. They'll be on the prayer list uh, uh, tonight after we update it. Also praying for the Stanley family in the loss of uh, former Mayor uh, Woodrow Stanley uh, today. Uh, praying that God would just touch that family as well. And so many, so many, so many people. Uh, that have needs on today. We are praying. Uh, we are also praying that God cover us tonight. We have a storm going on, but we want God to cover and take care of us. All right. So let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Jesus, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for all that you are doing. We ask that you would touch us right now. Move on us. We ask you to heal, deliver, continue to touch Liam, and let your blood cover him. Right now, his little body, Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch that family, touch that mother and that father. In the name of Jesus, we, uh, that grandfather, that grandmother, bless them right now. Oh, bless the entire family. Bless God, all those that are sick and shut in, all those that are on the prayer list uh, right now. Bless Talanda and man and the rest of that family in the loss of their mother. Oh, in the name of Jesus, continue to move on the bereaved, continue to move, continue to bless, continue to bless our church. Uh, hallelujah. Cover us, cover my family with your blood. Help us to grow in grace. Help us to grow in you. Help us, God, to be what you're calling for in the last and evil days. No weapon form against us shall prosper. We pray healing on all those that are sick, all those that are scheduled for surgery. We are praying for them right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead and share. Share. We're going to talk about some relationships uh, uh, tonight. Nice. This was uh, Sister Patton's uh, idea. She wanted to talk about relationship. But we have a lot of people in church uh, that are in relationship, but they have gotten stuck. And they won't go to the next level. And it is so important Amen. for your relationship to grow. Anything that doesn't grow eventually die. Uh, your church should grow. You know, sometimes churches grow fast. Sometimes they grow slow. But they need to grow. Your marriage needs to grow. Uh, hallelujah. And your relationships need to grow. Now, they were just talking about someone here uh, recently, uh, a preacher that had been dating for 30 years. Uh, that is too long Amen. to be dating anybody. Too long. Uh, we were taught by Robert Henson <laughs> that uh, anything over two years is too long. Too long. Yeah, if you've been dating in a relationship uh, for two years, then you ought to know after two years whether you love her or not, Amen. whether you love him or not. Amen. And if you don't, you know, you're not... Uh, you're not sure, then you might need to get your space and seek the Lord. Amen. But all these long, drawn-out relationships are not uh, good. Uh, experience tells us that, uh, you know, two years is about it. Three years, you mm -hmm. ought to be able to go ahead and Amen. say, I do. Now, we don't live together. We don't live together. Uh, we do not live together because living together and sleeping together and having relationships, uh, um, that's fornication. Mm -hmm. And all fornicators, according to the word of God, mm -hmm. shall have their part mm -hmm. in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to burn, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, we don't want to burn. We don't want to burn in our flesh, and we don't want to get burned. And so mm -hmm. uh, relationships are very, very, very important to God uh, to the point where he ordained them, and then he mm -hmm. gives you the go-ahead to uh, uh, connect and to, and to join together and raise a family and to be married. Uh, relationships um, uh, that are, uh, that produces sin are not of God. 
it's not of God. The way in which two or more concepts, objectives, or people uh, are connected or state of being connected uh, is a relationship, is a relationship. And so you connected to this person, mm -hmm. hallelujah, you connected to this person. Uh, now, we're talking primarily about a relationship between a man and a woman. Uh, that's our belief. And you can apply what your belief is, but our belief is that. Uh, however, however, not just, it just, does, just does, uh, doesn't apply to uh, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, but also friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be in a toxic friendship. That's That's right. You don't want to be in that either, you know. Some friendships are good for you. Some friendships are not good for you. All right. Some friendships you have to get away from. Uh, I have found myself uh, here recently, I've had some relationships that I didn't give them a pink slip. I didn't notify them of our uh, separation. I didn't tell them that it was over. I just pulled, withdrew myself from the situation. I am a minister of the gospel. We pastor a church and we, and we uh, preach the gospel. And a lot of times people in relationship with us become too common. Mm -hmm. And now they want to talk to you in a kind of way. They, they want to cuss in front of you and all that. Uh, when you get common with me, I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to respect me like I respect you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of times you do have to cut off friendships. Uh, and, and, and you have to uh, maintain a certain standard in your relationships. Mm -hmm. And so it is so important, it's so important that you take good care of your relationship. Relationships are uh, ordained by God. Let's go into, uh, we're going to talk about marriage for a second because that's the relationship that we're in. Marriage is, is in the process by which two people make their uh, relationship public, official, and permanent. Now, uh, I preach a lot in the jail and most of the guys in the jail are not married. I said one, uh, on one occasion, I had 30 guys in the room, and I said, how many of you guys in here are married? Maybe one or two might lift their hands. How many guys in here got children? Uh, everybody lift their hands. Well, to let me know there was a whole lot of fun and cake going on. Wow. All right? All right. <laughs> so uh, and nobody had made a commitment. In Mary, to the young man, to the young man that I'm speaking to now, if you really love her, you will marry her. You will cover her, yeah. also covering yourself with the word of God. And therefore, shall a man what, leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife? All right, let's look up that word cleave and see what it means. All right, I got the dictionary right here. Cleave, what does cleave mean? All right, we're going to see here. It says, uh, split or serve or something, especially uh, along a natural line or grain. All right, cleave to, let me see. That ain't the cleave I'm, I want. All right, let me go down here. All right, let me get this scripture here. Oh, cleave to his wife. Okay, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The act of cleaving involves fully respecting your mate, honoring him, her, knowing them, and enjoying intimacy. Look, uh, let's look at a little more closely at this issue and its application. Cleave. We want to cleave to our our, mm -hmm. our spouse. We want to join with our spouse, leaving the father and the mother and joining to our spouse. That's what it's all about. And he, and he goes on to say, now you're not one anymore. Now you're, I mean, you're not two anymore, but now you are one. You are one. Hallelujah. Uh, and that's found in Genesis 2 and 24. And we all know what happened there. Uh, uh, Adam was lonely when nobody talked to but the animals, and he was lonely. And so God made him a helpmate, and he took his rib out, and, and he made woman. And that's why if you go to the doctor and you get a, 
uh, uh, x-ray, you got eight ribs. And if she goes to the doctor and get an x-ray, she has nine. Because God took one to make her. All right? And so, um, uh, and, and, and God gave uh, Adam um, a, a, a gift. He gave her Eve. Now, Eve was not Adam's daughter. Eve was Adam's wife. Uh, in this relationship with a, a, with a man and a woman, whether it's your girlfriend or boyfriend, whether you, some of you are out of shack and playing house, whether it's, 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 she still is not your daughter. If you want a daughter, then ask God to bless you with one, and he will. But she's not your daughter. So you don't treat her like your daughter. Mm -hmm. She's been raised before, so you can't raise her. There's no whooping because she's not a child. There's no beating. There's none of that because she's no. not a child. You know, she's already been raised. She had a daddy. She don't need another daddy. All right, she need a priest. You can write this down. She need a prophet, a protector, and a provider. That's what she needs. She don't need no boss. All right. She don't need no daddy. Amen. She don't need no daddy. Yeah. She don't need nobody Tell to, her. Talk about to, it. to, you know, she don't need no masters, you know. Uh, be her priest, be her protector, be her prophet and her provider. Be that. Don't be her boss. Don't be her master. Don't be her daddy. That's not what she needs. All right. And in your relationship, even with your girlfriend, in your relationship, mm -hmm. you're not her daddy. That's why a lot of daddies be wanting to kill these guys because you're trying to take her daddy's place. You, you can't take her daddy's place. You have a daddy. You need right. to stay in your place. And if you love her so much, marry her. By marrying her, you cover her. You cover her not only with your name, but with everything that you have. I'm older now, and I've seen a whole lot of stuff. And I've seen, hallelujah, where you didn't cover her, and you died. Now she's here, and your mama come in there and took the house, took the car, took everything that was in your name because she didn't have a right to it because you didn't do what it was necessary for her to have the right. So what you need to do, you need to cover her. You need to cover her. Now, uh, a lot of people, they, 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 don't, they, they enter a relationship with a plan B. Now, plan B uh, is, well, I'm going to enter her, but if this don't act right, if, if this is not right, then uh, I'm going to divorce her. Well, let me tell you something. I heard Mother Henson say this, uh, Shirley Henson, I heard her say this. Uh, when one of the grandchildren was getting married. She says, divorce is not an option. I am not going to pull the Bible out on you. I'm not going to pull the scripture out on you. And I'm not going to try to convince you of that. But I'm going to let you know, if you enter into a relationship with divorce on your mind, you are doomed already. You need to take that out of your vocabulary. Take that out. And then you need to work hard. Work hard at, at, at um, making your relationship work. Now, I'm, I'm going to shut up in a minute, but I'm going to let you know, men sometimes talk too much. And, and, and you tell the devil everything you're thinking. And, and you tell your neighbors or you tell the guys on your job, you, we need to be quiet. And the things that we're going through, we need to work it out with the Lord. Because we just preached not too long ago uh, about strongholds. I still, I'm still reading that book on stronghold in the African-American community. Stronghold. If you think ill of your woman, uh, the devil is going to take that imagination and he's going to make it become a stronghold and, and you're doomed already. But if you really love this person, you really love this person, you'll go out your way to make sure that everything is okay. Yeah, let me tell you something. The Bible says that soft answer turn away wrath. The Bible is right. The Bible don't lie. And sometimes we need to learn to have a soft answer instead of a hard answer. And we need to make sure that what we're doing uh, uh, preserve uh, the uh, uh, marriage. Uh, this bonding this, of the two people is, uh, we tell God, until death do us part, but we stop short of death. And, and, you know, and that's not what you told God. 
You, you told God it's still death to be part of then you changed up. What if God changed up on us? You know, God said, yet your yea be yea and nay be yea. Nay. Okay, do what God has uh, asked you to do. All right? Let me go. How do I make a marriage work? First question. Marriage brings great joy to many, but it also brings challenges, often profound uh, ones. Now, let me tell you something. If you don't been with somebody for 5, 10, uh, 15 years, you got kids and you ain't got married yet, I, my question to you is, what is your problem? You've already lived with her for all these years. You've already been with her. So why don't you please God and get married? Everybody please in your situation but God. So please God and get married, all right? Mm. And cover her so your mama won't come in there and take your house from her, all right? Mm. How a couple manage them often determine whether their relationship collapse or hold firm. Preserving long-term connections may require one or both partners to uh, jettison misguided beliefs or uh, dysfunctional habits that they made themselves whole, while bearing in mind that trying to challenge a spouse tends to fail unless the individual also wants to change. All right, let's keep in mind that she is not your um, opponent. All right, you're not in this as opponents. Uh, she's on one side and you're on, one, uh, on the other side. You two are to work together. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, there are two main things that you might fight over. That's sex and money. I'm going to keep it real with you. You might as well keep it real. You know, keep it real, Pastor. And, keep and it money. real. Hallelujah. Amen. And I tell you what, both of them will take you out, especially that money. All right? <laughs> So you need to make sure yeah. that you know one another, hallelujah, that you learn one another so that you can avoid pitfalls like that because the devil will use those things to get to you, all right? How does marriage change people? Marriage is, uh, does more than change people. Living situation, you know, it's just, it's just not you coming into my house, staying with me, and now I got to put the toilet seat down. It's more than that. Uh, becoming a spouse appears to change one's personality as well, especially in the early years of marriage. Uh, men, for example, tends to become more contentious uh, uh, and introvert than they were when single, and women become more emotional, emotionally stable. Both tend to become less agreeable. All right, and so you have to work on that. You got to work on that because you got to take these two individuals and they got to blend together, all right? And like I said, not just marriage, but in your friendships. You don't want no toxic relationship. One friend don't control the other friend. Uh, the Bible says, don't lord over God's inheritance. So you don't control your friends, and your friends don't control you. You don't control your wife, and your wife don't control you, yeah. all right? It's a give and take uh, uh, in any situation. What are the strong signs that a marriage will succeed? With, uh, the researcher says that maintain that a couple reveal the state of their bonds in a way that they speak about each other. How do I talk about her? How does she mm. talk about me? All right. Uh, specifically, they refer to each other fondly as we more than I when speaking about their relationship. If it's always I, 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 I something ain't right in that situation. Amen. Because you didn't do that by yourself. Nope. You know, you didn't do that alone. She helped you. Uh, he helped you, all right? Especially and with details about their past together. Express pride in surviving challenges rather than dwelling on their problems. Right. Now, I've had challenges. We've had challenges. But one of the things that have always kept us uh, married is because we refuse to leave. <laughs> if, if, you know, if you got to leave, you, wanna, you know, you should never let the devil run you out of your house. Hallelujah. You should never. You always stay in your house and you work on your relationship. If you're talking about a friendship today, don't ever let no, the devil destroy your friendship. Don't ever let the devil destroy your friendship. You know, uh, I was talking to one of my brothers last night um, uh, on the phone. And uh, this is a friendship that we've had since we were teenagers. Grew up in the church together. 
And uh, I pastored in a church now, and he goes to another church. He goes to a good church. And I told him again last night, I said, I don't care what church you go to. I don't care what you do. You always going to be my brother, you know. And I respect your <coughs> choice, you know. I, I, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm not upset because you're not helping me. I know that you're praying for me, and I know that fit that you have is good for you. And that's how you got to be about your, your, your relationships with brothers and sisters and, and with your wife. Now, uh, the Bible talks about a cleaving. Um, we, we try to, and you should try. You should try in everything that you do. You should always try to do it together. They told me uh, when I was in uh, Dover, Delaware, they said, if you go to Sicily, by yourself, you only have to go one year. However, if you choose to take your spouse, then you'll have to stay longer. You'll have to stay at least two years. And it was no contemplating for me. Some people did. Some, some men did go without their, their spouses. And let me tell you, they go over there and got to cutting up. But let me tell you, I did not want to go without my family. And every time I've gone somewhere, I've always, always uh, made sure that they could go. Now, uh, especially long term. Now, I have taken some trips and she did not want to go. And that's fine because I was coming right back. But when we, went, when we were stationed overseas, I was not going anywhere long term uh, without them being there with me. Because it's important that we stay and stick together. All right? We got to stay and stick together. All right? All right. What can a couple do to keep a marriage happy? Amen. The idea of a honeymoon period is real. Many couples experience a general decline in satisfaction after the first year of marriage. Uh, after that, that first year is hot. Those who stay together research tend to share some habits. They act like they are still dating. They remain focused on each other's positive trait, express gratitude, and recognize the eternal pleasure uh, may be causing them stress rather than blaming each other. Uh, what happens is both of you got to grow up. You got to grow up and you got to give the other one, uh, you know, the benefit of doubt. You have to. You got to, you know, you got to make sure that you see things uh, their way. It's just not your way, but their way. All of the accusations and all these evil thoughts that you got to know that they come from the devil. Oh, yeah, ain't gonna help me. I'm, I'm, I said I was gonna be quiet, didn't I? But my thing with, with you is, with, with, with men are, she was she was hot last year. Now all of a sudden she ain't no good. Amen. You know. Mm. Oh, she was she was. She was better than chocolate candy last year, but this year she, she, you know, life don't work like that. Life don't work like that. You can't be like that. You have to mature in your character. And, and, and marriage is what you make it. But if you uh, start playing the blaming game, both of you are going to lose. You cannot play the blaming game. You thank God for what you got. Hallelujah. And if somebody says something, believe them. Uh, I, I don't understand that. When she tell you this is the way it is and you still saying it ain't, just believe it. And, and, and if it is a lie, God will bring it out. And when God bring it out, he'll fix it. But you bring it out, you're going to make it worse. So you got to never play the blaming game. Never play the blaming game because you're going you're gonna to lose. You're going to lose in the blaming game, you know. And what happens is you cause them to lie, and, and then they lie, lie to cover up that lie, lie to cover up that lie, and you can't do that. Learn how to leave stuff alone. Learn how to let stuff go. Hallelujah. Now, let me, let me stop here and, 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 and just give you a little nugget. There are some people that are never going to get married. I don't want you to feel bad about that. Being safe is mandatory. Being caught up to be with the Lord is mandatory. 
living with God is mandatory. But living with a man or living with a woman is optional. Being married is optional. God, God, God gave that to you as an option. I think was it Paul that said, "I wish that you would be like me." Mm-hmm. You know, you know, he was making it without that. But see, a lot of people think, "Well, if I don't get married, I, I, I'm gonna die old maid. I'm gonna die," and they start giving the treats away. And once you start giving your treats oh. away, you are going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. So what you do is realize. My life with God is mandatory. My relationship with God is mandatory. My intimacy with God is mandatory. But with you, it ain't. And so don't be beating yourself up and getting fat and, and just getting all, you know, messed up because you want to get buried. Tell your flesh to obey itself. Mortify the deeds of your body like the word said and get yourself under control. It's not mandatory. You don't have to go in there and take pills because you want to get married. You don't have to do that because it's not mandatory. It's not, there's nowhere in the Bible saying you must. It's not like that. You just have to learn how to maintain uh, Mm -hmm. by yourself. And you know what? Some people do better by themselves anyway. All right. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to handle a problem with your partner? I'll let you answer that. You you go ahead. I'm not (laughs) talking enough. Oh, to handle a problem with your partner. Well, Well, I would just say uh, with that, because, Pastor, you touched on so many things um, in marriage and how marriage is. And and I was thinking before we put this together, how 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 we make vows and marriage is a vow. And, you know, that vow. And I was just thinking about what that vow is. You know, we stand before the preacher and our family and our friends. And the vow is, you know, I take the, and that's what I said to him, I take the Samuel to be my lawful wedded husband, you know, in sickness and in health. And um, one word came up that uh, a lot of people nowadays, uh, it can become very controversial. And that word is obey. And the preacher asked me, and to obey, and I said yes. And obey, people hear that word and they think, you're not a dog and you know, you're know you not a, his slave and obey, what that mean? But mm-hmm. God ordained that and obedience, it, it, you have to think this way when you hear that word, obey. And a lot of times, I'm just gonna be honest, my husband asked me to do things when we first got married, you know, years ago, and I didn't obey him. Mm-hmm. And what happened when I didn't, then there was a problem. So we have to learn to, you know, when you make your vow, marriage is ordained. And anything ordained by God is what? Good. That's good. And I was thinking of how so many people have been in relationships, uh, uh, They've been dating for years and have children, live together, and that person passes away. And Pastor touched on that. And it was just so uh, disheartening that when they passed away, you know, they're thinking that they're entitled to all this money or these benefits. And because that they weren't married, you know, they were denied a lot of things, uh, the 9-11 situation. Uh, It was a documentary on that. And these men and women, uh, the police department, fire department, were dating these people, uh, male and female. You know, the women were dating the men, the men were dating, you know, they were dating, living together, had children. And this tragedy happened. And so they went stomping up to the uh, benefits department saying, okay, uh, I have children, you know, with paperwork and all that. And they looked at it and said, I see what you're saying, but guess what? You weren't married to them. And they were denied benefits, money. Well, we have children together. Well, that's congratulations. That's what they told them, congratulations. But they had to go to court. And I believe to this day, they're still fighting in court. And a lot of them were denied things because they didn't do it the right way. They weren't 
married. A lot of these companies, they they require that now. I've had I've gotten call and had to go run married people in the backyard because uh, the company I work for, the railroad said, if you are not married to a person for five years when you retire, they get absolutely nothing. And so uh, they had her get married. They had been living together for years, yeah, but they never yeah, got married. Yeah. And so in order for her to get pension, Boy, in order, because the railroad, has, the railroad has tier one, tier two, you get your pension check, and then they turn around and cut her a check too. But she couldn't get that check if she hadn't been married to you for five years. And so it is very important to, to uh, from a legal standpoint, to, to, to marry uh, and to stay married. Now, the, the obey part, the obey, I look at obey as not as uh, I'm your daddy. Do what I say. Do what I say. But I look at it as, 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 as a um, keeps respect. Peace. Yeah. As a respect. Right. I, I look at it as as uh, not just uh, in the sense of obey, but the sense of respecting, respect my my opinion. Yeah. Even if trust, I don't agree, if I don't agree. Yeah. Trust my opinion. Yeah, trust That's the way you. I look at that. Not, you know, a lot of people take obey like, you know, I don't have to do what he say. I've, I've married people. I've been married people. I've married a girl. And said, they want to take it out. I married a girl. That, they, they wanted to take it out. I married a girl once said, I'm going to say this, but I want to tell you right now, I'm lying. You know, and, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you might want to rethink this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not, you have to look at it as a lot, not obey in the sense of, of, of a child, but in, obey as in the sense of respecting your opinion. Mm -hmm. and, in, and, you know, and you, and, 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 and you have to respect her opinion as well, you know. That's right. And so uh, that is important. The way that you handle problems is you got to assume that their spouse are doing the best that they can. You know, well, she's doing the best she can, I guess. You know, uh, remain empathetic towards the other person. Speak honestly and compassionate about what bothers them. And seek solutions together rather than demanding change to tend to the most successful. Now, I'm going to be transparent. That's me. That's me all the way. Uh, I don't have time to wait on you to change. I want, I want, I want, I want success right away. But I had to learn to slow down and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. say, look, uh, eventually they'll come around. Eventually, maybe she'll come around, you know, because some people don't don't uh, receive stuff uh, quickly. Some things people it takes people, especially when you take somebody from this house and somebody from this house and put them together. And say, okay, it's going to be hot for a year, but after that honeymoon, oh, now y'all really got to live together. Now I got to see her habits. Uh, you, don't see, you know, I got to see her without the hairpiece, without the weave, without the eyelashes. You know, you know what I'm saying? She's got to see me without the tie. You know, she got to see me with the stubble. And, you know, and so now mm -hmm. it's like, you know, uh, uh, you find out about each other. You see, well, maybe she don't like to clean up. And, and you got a problem with that. There's no reason to divorce her. You know, maybe, maybe. Help out. Yeah. <laughs> help, help out or step help, over help it. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. <laughs> help out or step over We're gonna it. We're going to keep it real, Saints. Step, yeah. <laughs> if you, I mean, if you, if you can't out. pick it up, step over it. Mm -hmm. But there's no reason to start fighting about it, you know. Uh, you have to uh, assume that they're doing the best that they can. You see what I'm saying? Now, things really change. Uh, what time is I want to make sure. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not, we're not going to be able to finish all this, but we, we, we're going to get to but it. But to add to what you're saying, Pastor, I was just thinking about uh, when you uh, when it said something about uh, empathetic, how you speak uh, mm -hmm. to someone. And years ago, it was a few years ago, we were discussing money. It was a financial situation. And I did something without consulting my husband. I'm going to be transparent about it. And uh, the matter was settled, but it was the way I did it. And, uh, and he made a uh, comment about it, a statement about it. And he, was, he said his opinion. And it's not, you know, the old saying, it's not what he said, it's how he said it to me. And when he said it to me, he said it very kind, loving, and as soon as when he said it, it just clicked. And I was like, you know, he's right. 
I went through all of that when I should have did it this way, mm -hmm. and I it, I it just clicked. And ever since then, he had, had I made up in my mind at that point, I'm gonna do it the way he wants me to do it. Before mm -hmm. I make a decision like that, I'm gonna consult my husband first. Mm -hmm. And ever since that day, it was just how he said it. Mm -hmm. And so tone is very important. And I'm talking to you wives. Sometimes we can be a little naggy. And just like husbands, you know, you got some men, it's not that they're trying to be a father. He doesn't need a mother either. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need a mother. Uh, what they got nagging, fussing, complaining, you know, be grateful for what you had. Uh, Mother Henson, Sister Henson made a comment and she was saying how she, we had a wives class and she made something really profound. She said, never apologize for wh where you live and what kind of car you drive because that's what your husband is providing for you. Wherever it's at, you make it the best that it is. Your home may not be that five bedroom house that you want, but if it's a two bedroom home, you keep it clean, you keep it neat, you be grateful for what he's able to provide for you at that time. Now, as years progress, you know, in our marriage, uh, things are, it has progressed. And when we first got married, our cars were old cars. Living you in know, a trailer. <laughs> they were uh, clunkers, you know, hoopties. We've been through that, the hoopties. Our finances were up and down. But as the Lord uh, continued to bless our marriage and bless our finances, we're able to, you know, I'm able to enjoy the fruit uh, of the labor of my husband and for him listening to the voice of the Lord. And that's where the priest comes in. You know, God talks to him about things and he'll tell me, you know, the Lord told me, it's not gonna always be like this. You know, it's not gonna always be this way. And I've held on to that. And I trust in my husband, you know, with that, uh, with that statement. And God has proved and showed himself mightily in our relationship. And we've learned to communicate you know, communication. I grew up in a home. Uh, both my parents worked, you know, and there were some issues there. And I love my, my mom and my dad. I love my parents. But when we grew up differently, you know, his home life was different than mine, you know. And so uh, uh, what I thought was okay, he thought was strange. He was like, uh, we didn't do that. Well, we did it in my house. Yeah, you have so, to learn how to blend. Blend. You and know. so like, okay, yeah. if that's what. I ate hot dogs. She didn't eat hot dogs. Hot dogs. dogs. I and ate, so I, I was know, like, hot dogs? That's, I, I thought goulash was it. And she didn't, they didn't they do think all of, that. Yeah, we, they I ate was casseroles. Like, and I'm looking at but what is a casserole? <laughs> you know, so it's just, you know, you and have we to learned blend. That, you know, we learned to, to be blend. like, well, okay, if that's what you. But let me point this out. But with that money thing, let me tell you something. Yeah, money. I wish yeah. I would have realized this early on, in, but I do realize it now. You're going to have to be on one accord when it comes to money. Yes. Especially if you're sharing accounts yes. because, you know, it's nothing worse than you think you got it and you ain't got it because she done took it or he done took yeah. it. Yeah. And let me tell you something about money. Mm -hmm. When consumer come and knock on that door... <laughs> They don't care if y'all get along. They don't care if y'all love each other. That's right. They don't care if you got a joint account or a separate account. They don't care. They yeah. want their money. Yeah. And if you don't work it out amongst yourself, consumers going to show you how to work yeah. it out. There they are. Because they will cut you, you off. off. <laughs> the water people, too. One of the people said to me, and I, I experienced it one time, but someone said to me they live in this city where we live, this little this little town, not Flint, Burton. And somebody said to me, have you ever been to the water company? And I said, no, I, I've never really gone down there. Mm -hmm. uh, Vaquita's gone down, but I've gone down there. I sat in the car. But one day I did go down there and went in and paid. And I was nice and, I, and on time. And I felt like they felt, these people here are cold and mean. And I've heard that, you know, they're cold and mean down there for no reason. It's probably because they deal with a lot of stuff, yeah, but they don't care. They are not have. They are not pleasant. Which you know, you know, some places you go, the customer service is out of sight. Oh, may I help you? 
oh, okay, let's do it this way. But some of these utility companies, they're, they're, they're not geared towards customer service. They're geared more towards collection. So you've got to have yourself together when it comes to money, right. and you have to be on one accord. You have to be on one accord. If you're not on one accord, you're going to be sitting in the dark. You're going sit to be sitting in the dark. So make sure that you put each other first and consider each other so that you won't be sitting in the dark because it is very important. I'm telling you, when you get out on your own and you're trying to have a home and you're trying to, these people don't care nothing about y'all loving each other. They don't care if y'all hate each other as long as your money right. And that's why you have to stay on one accord with your husband and with your wife. And you have to, you know, you, you, you can work well together. Let me say this. You can work well together if you, if you combine them. However, it is my belief that the man is the provider and that uh, he ought to make sure that everything is, is done. Now, I've been, seen some relationships that I don't understand. I've seen relationships in my family that I un don't understand where she's in control of the money and she calls all the shot. She makes all the money. I don't understand that because that's not the way Bishop Donald brought me up. You know, I was brought up as to be the priest, the provider, and, and, and so I make sure I provide. And what I try to do, I try to make sure that I have enough to cover everything just in case she feel like she don't want to work or she can't work. You see, she's always have work, but she didn't have to. You see, she didn't. She, she couldn't get some, some things uh, 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 or she had to sacrifice a few things if she didn't. But she always was able to eat, to drive, and to have shelter. I made sure of that. But you got to stay on one accord and don't steal from each other. You got to stay from, on one accord when it comes to money. All right. I got another question here. Can you make a marriage divorce proof? Listen to this. Approximately 40% of the marriages in a divorce. The risk is lower for those married for the first time but higher for those married at a very young age or whose parents were divorced. We were married at a very young age, very young, yeah. a very young age. I was 22. And I was 20. And she was 20. Oh, I might, even, I, might, I might even been 23. And <laughs> her parents were still together at the time. My mother had was divorced. So we had some, uh, some statistics against us. Hallelujah. But God helped us uh, to divorce proof of marriage. Research suggests partners not rush into it. Make sure they share the same values and the level of commitment. Take that two years mm -hmm. to get to know one another. That's right. This is what you do. You date for two years to get to want, know one another. Anything over two years, and my child will tell you that. I fuss all the time. I say, hey, I want to know more. But she's telling me not to say nothing, so I ain't going to say nothing. But two years, that's it. And then take those two years to know one another. Mm -hmm. And then after you get married, take another two years we start, before you start popping out babies. To know. We got that from Robert E. Hinson. Hallelujah. And, and, it, and it worked. We took two years getting married one another and two years before we had a baby. You know, now you got four good years together you know, to get to know one another. I'm talking about di divorce proofing. Get to know one another, work out the kinks. Because when you add that child in there, now it's That's different. Because that child is going to take over everything. Yeah. That do. child is going to demand a whole lot of time for both of you if you parent them right. And thank God when we, we had uh, dated two years and we got married. And then two years, here comes Joseph. Joseph had special needs. So now we really got to focus on getting him in the right program getting him in the right. He had two surgeries before he was one year old. So, you know, we, we, we you know, thank God we knew each other. You know, uh, I had to stay at, at in, in Dover at the, at the base we were stationed at. She had to go to Andrews Air Force Base. W when he had both surgeries, she had, she went and spent the night with him in the hospital. You know, we had to go through that. And I thank God that we took those years to get to know one another. So we were able to navigate through that very spookly, you know, because when he got there, he, that first year was very demanding on us because he had to have two corrective surgeries. And God blessed him tremendously, tremendously, because we didn't fight. 
we weren't trying to, you know, but we worked together. We worked together and we knew each other well. All right. And it's important to have these discussions before you get married. You know, a lot of couples, they have a vision board. You know, you need to talk about money. You need to talk about, you know, family. You need to talk about children. He might have been brought up in a home with the beat down of the beat down. And you might have been brought up in a home. Oh, we got time out. Well, you are already going to have a conflict because when that baby come, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to want to beat him down. But the, she's going to want to, no, we're going to talk quiet, <coughs> we're gonna talk soft. That's already going to be a conflict. Mm -hmm. Money, intimacy. Have those discussions before you get married. And that way you can be on the same page. That's so important because there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about being unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, now spiritually, yes, you want to be on the same page. Spiritually, too. You know, he might be in la-la land and you might be like, no, nah, we're going to pray and fast. So what's important is have those discussions before you get married. And that way... When, when, when you come together and you're married, you already know, you know, he might say, I like home cooked meals. Okay. You already know. If you don't know how to cook ladies, you better learn, especially if you love them, you know, and, and she might say, well, I was raised in a home that I didn't, my mom didn't work. Now one day I feel I don't have to, then he needs to get prepared and say, okay, I really love her. Then if you really love her, well then, okay, you don't have to work. Have these discussions before you get married because like I said that scripture unequally yoked and so many times it's, it fits spiritually but that's also also naturally as well mm -hmm. have those discussions and be honest about it let them know what you expect let her know what you expect you know but you don't, don't be dogmatic about it don't be when you better if you don't it's over then that's when you work through things and come to a compromise and, and have those discussions communication is key that, and that's key. And what gets me through with our marriage is we've been married of quite a few years is humor. You know, you hear that all the time. Humor really does make, put a marriage together. My husband and I, we'll get to laughing about something or we'll see something or read something and we get to laughing about it. And that brings us together because our humor is about the same, you know, when it comes to things and that we find funny. But uh, that's very important as well. Commun communication. Communication is key. And just remember, anything and everything that's ordained by God good. is good. All right. It's good. Marriage is good. Marriage, yes, you're going to have your ups. Yes, you're going to have your downs. Life is a journey, and you have to learn to go through it and go through it together. Don't be so quick to call mama. Don't be so quick to call daddy. Work it out together amongst yourself. What that old saying also say, too many cooks spoil the bra. Mm -hmm. And if you got too many people in your, in your business, in your marriage, then it's not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Eventually, either you're going to break up or you're going to always have strife, always have uh, trouble. So work together. It's, be a team. Don't be against each other, as Pastor said. Be a team and, work, and God will bless. God will work all things out and you'll look around at the fruit of your labor and be so grateful to him that, you know, you'll look at him and say, I'm so glad I married him mm -hmm. or I'm so glad I married her, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what marriage is. Mar oh, marriage is ordained by God. It's not a curse. Mm -hmm. It's not a relationships. They're not a curse. They're only a curse mm -hmm. if, 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 you, if, if the person is a toxic person. You know, mm -hmm. and so just always remember, keep God first. Let him lead and guide you, mm -hmm. and he'll guide you in all truths. All and right. all relationships will be successful. Now I got eight minutes, so let me say this right quick. She said, don't call mama. One thing I learned from, from um, my mother-in-law, I knew my mother-in-law before I knew my wife. He did. And, and, and we, were, we were good friends. And um, my mother-in-law taught me well immediately. And she let me know up front, now look, I love you, we're close, but that's my child. That's still my child. And it let me know that if I go to her and complain about her, she's going to take her side because that's her child. It, and so if I go to my mother and complain about her, she's going to automatically take my side. 
I might be wrong with two left shoes, but she, I'm her child. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's good to keep relatives out. What blessed us is that uh, we, we got away. married and we lived 700 miles away, away for the first few years of our marriage. And then we moved thousands of miles away because so we, we had were, to work together. We were, <laughs> we were stationed in uh, Italy uh, on the island of Sicily. And, and now when we were in Delaware, we could come home, 12 hour drive, or we can call home. But Sicily, we couldn't do that because we couldn't come home. And if you call home, it was $11 a minute. And so uh, we had to really work uh, together and, and, and really depend on, on one another. So keep family out of your business because family cannot be impartial. impartial. They cannot be, it, I mean, it's, it's just, they're going to take sides. Let me tell you something. If my, my daughter come in here upset and he comes to complain about what she's doing, I'm going to blame him. I already know that, you know, I'm going to blame him because I, I can't be impartial because that's my child. That's my baby, you see. So that's why it's good to keep family out. I often suggest if you get married, move away. So you can depend on one another. You see what I'm saying? All right, all right. Uh, I got one last question. And I, uh, not one last question, but one statement. Those girls, I've seen a lot of this here lately in, in my life, where girls are brought up in the church and they backslide to get a man. It ain't worth it. It is not worth it. Do not backslide to get a husband. Do, don't do that. Stay in church. Do not backslide to get a wife. If they don't want to be saved, then that's it. My sister-in-law told her husband, I, I love you. I want to marry you, but you need to get saved. If you don't get saved, this is over. And he got saved. He's a pastor and preacher to this day, you know, but you don't start giving your treats away. You don't start getting unsaved, you know, for nobody. Jesus is the most important One thing man. in your life. Yeah. And no man or no woman, woman is worth that. Worth I mean, hey, you might love them, but if they don't want to get saved, obviously they don't love you, and obviously they don't love God. And so don't ever, ever, ever leave the Lord. Leave the Lord to get saved. Can I change, uh, can, it, can a partners change each other? Criticism in marriage can lead to heightened emotion reactivity. Uh, reactivity which one partner triggers by how the other bothers them and the other by suggestion or criticism about it. You got to wisen up, man and woman. You, you, you saying, well, they did this. Well, they did this because you did that. That's right. They're reacting to your stupidity. What you doing. To what you're doing. And a lot of times we don't see what right. they, we don't see what we did, but we see what, what they, they did. And you got to, you got to stop that. You know, say what well, she did that. She said that she did. She mad at you. She tired of you. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to be able to see yourself and see her. And the Bible says that when you see yourself, he says, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Not go, I'm going to go over here and work out Kitas. That ain't what God said. God said, work out your own. Work on yourself. Yeah. But a lot of times, uh, what the author is saying here is you getting the backlash of what you did. And you don't forget what you did. And, and now she's upset. Now you're ready to go on out and have a steak. Remember, you got to remember, men are analytical. Women are emotional. Men are givers. Women are receivers. You know, when, you, when a woman has to give, she's going to be off. That's why we got a lot of situations. You got women that, that, that's working and paying for everything. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, and now they're, they're mannish, you know? They're mannish, they're, you know, uh, they tell them to pass off, I ain't doing, you know? Hallelujah, but let me tell you something, that ain't God's way. She's to receive, you to give, you to take care, you to cover, you to do that stuff. And a lot of times, what happens is you, you don't put her out there so bad. Now she, you know, a lot of men come to jail and they expect her to be faithful. They expect her to do all this stuff. And I have to tell them, first of all, brother, you can't run home from jail. 
Hallelujah. You can't do that. Prison. that yeah. You in prison for the next 10 years and you want her to do what? Man, you just pray she don't tell you about it, you know, because you can't do that. You Amen. got to be there to cover. Amen. You got to be the leader in that situation. You got to Amen. be the leader. I put a lot, a lot of uh, 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 responsibility on the man. Because I feel like, and I guess I was brought up like that. That's the way the bishop taught us, you know. You're the leader. You're the man. You make sure that she's taken care of. All right? You make sure that she's taken care of. And then she makes sure that she take care of you. Yeah. You take I'm care of ways. One of the things my father-in-law told me, uh, and my father-in-law was a different kind of guy. <laughs> but one thing he told me, he said, y'all take care of each other. Told me that on the phone. I was in Dover, Delaware. And one of the things I remember, he said just to me, not to us. He said, y'all take care of each other. If you can't take care of each other, send her on back home. <laughs> That's what he said. That's Amen. what he said. And so uh, you have to Amen. take care Amen. of each other. You got to take care of each other and watch what you do. And if you do something wrong, remember it. Because she will. You Amen. see. Men are like that. They forget stuff. They done did all this. They forget stuff. Now they super yeah. Christian. Mm. Now they, hallelujah, I'm ready to preach the word. And she's still mad from stuff that happened three years ago. Let her process it and let her forgive you. And, and, and be, be understanding when she does it, when she, when she don't move to forgiveness. Because they take things very, very hard where men don't. Men don't. We, we oh, okay, I'm good. And we, we moving on. Amen. Where women are still trying to process it. You know, you, you've you right. heard of it. They every, disconnected that, and that connected that, and disconnected that, and that connected that, and so it's got to go through the process. Uh, my wife preached not too long ago. She said, trust the process. Trust the process. And you have to. You have to trust that process, and, and that's going to uh, uh, divorce-proof your, your marriage. Can't each other? Yes, you can change each other. She has changed me tremendously. I think she's changed me more than I've changed her. I think she's changed me more than I've All changed right. her. All right, amen. You know, but uh, yeah, you can change. Jesus. You can. Are we perfect? No, 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 no. we're not perfect. Do we That's still have? Do we still have uh, uh, situations? Yes, yes, we do we still do. have situations. Oh, but I often tell her, especially here lately, I say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna fight. And <laughs> after this, I don't want no hard feelings. All right. Cause that's what, <laughs> that's what. And go get something to eat afterwards. Yeah, go get something to eat. That <laughs> was uh, was that? That's what Vera told Quick <laughs> when she was going to beat him up in Harlem Nights. I'm gonna beat you down, but after that, I don't want no oh, hard feelings. feelings. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so, and just Amen. move on. You have to move on. You don't Amen. take it serious. You have to move on. So All we're right. gonna stop right there. Amen. My next question was sex and marriage, but y'all ain't married. Y'all ain't married no way. So no matter. We don't okay. We don't talk about that right now. <laughs> we'll hit that later on, on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you got to register to see to hear that one. But we thank God. We praise the Lord Amen. for, uh, for all they doing. And if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead. But uh, I'm mainly talking to the ones that go to church with us because we have a lot of couples. That, uh, I won't say a lot, but we had quite a few couples that go to church with us, and they're not married. And I want them to get married. I want them to get married, and I want, but I want them to be prepared. Mm -hmm. I want them to know what they're up against because it's not easy. Now, you've done, done most of the married part, you know, except for the the vows. And, you, and, it, and some of y'all have been, been together for years, so what are you afraid of? What are you waiting on? Amen. You, 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 you stay together this long, go ahead and cover one another legally. That's the smart thing to do. Financially, that's the smart thing to do. Spiritually, it's the smart the thing. children. It's the smart thing to do. You have to. All right, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to uh, let you go. Precious Jesus, we thank you for your mercy. We thank, thank you for you this, this broadcast. We ask that you will let it be played over and over again and help someone. Uh, we, we pray that you will have your way. We, we pray that you just just move. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know what that spirit is where everybody's got to shack up, but we know that you have ordained marriage for a man and for a woman. Touch right now. Bless right now. Move on us in a special way. Continue to bless our prayer list. 
And God, we're going to be honored to give you the praise in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. You, Jesus. Join us on Sunday morning, excuse me, Sunday afternoon 2 at 2 p.m., yes. 601 East Pasadena Amen. at the Mount Moriah campus. We are Rebirth Church. We are Rebirth Church, and we will be at the Mount Moriah campus, uh, 601 East Pasadena. And come and get a word from the Lord. Everyone is welcome. Amen. We we practice uh, safe social distance. We have had four service. We, we're new. We, we were helping uh, Bishop's Church uh, for two years and things didn't work out the way that, that uh, uh, the bishop wanted, the way that we wanted it. But, you know, nevertheless, we don't cry over spilt milk. We just go on and do what God, so God has blessed us tremendously. Amen. I cannot even begin to tell you the, uh, what God has done. And so we, we have, our, the, have our church there and we're moving, we're growing, and God is blessing us. And I, I say all that, say that. We have had only four services, but let me tell you, nobody has gotten sick. Nobody has gotten COVID, because God has kept us. He has yeah. kept us. I pray over you every day that God keep us healthy, keep us well. We wear a mask. We do what we're supposed to, and God does what he uh, has Amen. said he would do. So bless us. We bless you. We'll continue on next Wednesday. But uh, see you Sunday for a great worship service. All right. I, I believe that you will be blessed. All right. Amen. God bless God you. Bless. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer.